Gwen McGee yep. is in Coral Gables, Florida. Are we going to kick off today, Gwen, with what? We are because we're at Create Ability, which is an advertising agency with a museum full of advertising toys. For instance, get a lot of this. Oh, 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 oh green oh, giant. Right. And it's coming up next on Personal FX. <laughs> Never die. But Gwen McGee is in Carl Gables, Florida, and I guess today I'm going to throw the ball to you, Gwen. It's okay to be a character today? We can all be characters? We can. Let's have some fun. It's Friday. We'll have our own individual strut, you know. It'll be good. I'm going to act crazy. I have too much toys around me, I tell you. <laughs> but I'm going to get to the facts for now, which is we're at Creatability. And basically, they're an advertising agency, and they have over 600 advertising toys. Plus, they have their own security camera. They have their own security man. His name is Earl. He wants to make sure that we don't break anything, and we won't, Earl. And also, They've given me a special little thing saying, welcome, Gwen McGee, personal effect. Is this that cool or what? But now, we got to meet super collector Lucas, who's a big kid, just right along with myself. How you doing, Gwen? How you doing? Fine, Thanks how are you? Oh, it's our pleasure, our pleasure. Well, I got to know, how were you able to get 600 advertising toys? How long did it take? Uh, no pun intended, but uh, we gave birth to the museum close to nine months, dead on. Really? A lot of phone calls, a lot of uh, feverish uh, nights uh, yeah. talking to antique dealers from around the country. Just trying to do uh, what you see in front of us, which, which is to put together just one incredibly comprehensive advertising museum. Hey, Richie, how about a nice Hawaiian punch? <laughs> oh, we'll be back on Personal <laughs> FX. Back out to Florida, we go to visit with a real character in her own right, Gwen <laughs> McGee. Gwen, what do you got for us? Well, I tell you, we've got all the advertising characters that made commercial history. Remember these little guys, the California Raisins? They're all coming up next on Personal FX. What kind of characters do you like in terms of ad characters? You know, I like all these. I like, you know, I like the, the raisins, and then there was another one, have another nutter butter peanut butter sandwich cookie was another <laughs> good one. There's all oh, this is gonna be great. I can't wait to see these, Gwen. Yep, JB, did you throw to me? <laughs> yes, I did. I, I did. Yes, I did. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Well, basically, what we're going to focus on now is some of the advertising toys from the 1960s. That's because our super collector grew up at that time. This is Richie Lucas, our super collector for How the day. How you doing, Gwen? And he has a marvelous collection in such a short time as just nine months. So will you tell me, how did it all start for you? Take me back to the beginning. I had a, a free afternoon. Actually, my sister was having a shower, wedding shower. And I said, oh, let me go check out a toy show. So I went to the, a, a local toy show, and I was rummaging through some boxes. And I saw our friend Mr. Bubble here along with these two Miller girls. And I got three of them for four bucks. Really? Four dollars, that was it. But it all started when I got home that evening. I just started doing a little bit of research. And I found out that these pieces in mint condition were collectively worth over $150. Wow. And the rest is history. That's great. Now, Mr. Bubble was actually your first piece, right? Mr. Bubble is the, what is the first piece of the Creative Bill of Toys Museum. He's in the center of the museum. He welcomes everybody to the museum. And, <laughs> he's and how great. could you not like a Mr. Bubble? Oh, yeah. you're right. It's just, he's done something to me today, and he's from 1967. <laughs> wow. 67. And you know, um, look at Mr. Clean. Remember him? It's like brings back your childhood yep. and everything. And plus, uh, Bald is in right now, well, so he's still going yeah, strong. Mr. Clean, Mr. Bubble, this is the clean section of the museum right here. <laughs> so right, everybody's great. very clean. And now, you have something here called the Miller Girls. Now tell me about this. These are the Miller Girls, um, which was actually, the girl was actually Frederick Miller's daughter from the Miller Brewing Company wow. from way back when. And he used her in some initial advertising. And we have a multicolored uh, Miller Girl, and we've got the gold Miller Girl. Not 18 karat, but still gold. And as a collection, they're very rare to find together. Yeah. Huh. So the fact that we got uh, the Miller Girls along with Mr. Bubble was a coup. Yeah. <laughs> it was an absolute coup. Wow. And he has so much fun with this. And I must tell him, I know you didn't want me to say it, but he even has a, a ping pong machine. What's it? A ping pong machine? That's uh, that's a, you that's have a, a pinball machine from my college days. So we don't <laughs> need to talk about Yeah, but you went and found it in another city. Yeah, so we I'm found it in Jacksonville, you. actually, right. in a warehouse. The right. actual, that's the actual machine, too. And I, you know, I know you just put all that into your work. It's, 
it's really very exciting oh, being here. Thanks. It's like, you know, being a big kid and everything. Now, this I've learned is the answer. This was a competition for Kool-Aid. Tell it. us about this. The Pillsbury Company in 1965 wanted to knock the Kool-Aid man off his throne. <laughs> so they introduced this cast of characters here, uh, one being a loudmouth punch, freckle-faced strawberry, uh, choo-choo cherry, lefty lemon, rooty tooty fruity. Goofy right. Grape, Wow Wow Watermelon, Jolly Olly Orange, there's Goofy Grape again, and Gwen, for the life of me, I cannot tell you this, this character's name. And he was a prototype that they were going to introduce, but they later pulled him back. I know he has a name, so if you can help us out and help with the, you know, uh, get some information, if somebody can fax to you, um, his name would be wonderful. Right, okay, so, so JB, you hear that? He doesn't know the name of this Mr. Chocolate Man. Thanks we'll call him that for now. And uh, if somebody knows, yeah. Very what? rare to have the entire collection. For the as life well, of so. me, I can't figure out what that little cube is in the middle of all those cups there. <laughs> That's a shameless plug, JB. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, I recognize that now. And you know what, JB? It's great. <laughs> so let's go on and continue with the collection great. here. Now, here is something that's quite interesting. I've never seen this before. This is uh, the Craft Man? The Craft Television Theater Cameraman. 1954, the Craft Theater Show um, was airing uh, first, uh, first show prime time that had a lot of family programming. And at the opening of the show, the little cameraman would go along the bottom of the screen but would be spinning. He was the first time that an animated character would be used on a family-type programming show. Well, everybody liked the character so much, they were calling the craft company to see where they can get them. So craft, being smart, said, let's make a character and let's sell it. So for 50 cents and two uh, box tops from Velveeta Cheese, you had the Craft Theater Television Cameraman. Wow, wow, what an interesting story. All right, so we've got lots more to go. Now this is Zippy the Mailman. No, 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 no. It's Mr. Zip. Mr. Zip, <laughs> Mr. Zip, Zip. Mr. Zip. Zip. That's Mr. Zip. Mr. Zip to you. <laughs> Mr. Zip to me. So tell me about Mr. Zip. Um, Mr. Zip, for some unknown reason, is my favorite piece. Uh, I don't know if it's because I can pull him along the, the floor in the office here, or, <laughs> or if it's just because his head turns left and right, you know. But uh, uh, the Postal Service wanted to have their customers utilize zip codes yeah. more proficiently, and they weren't. So they figured that uh, if they developed this promotional item, that customers would get in and start using zip codes more. Wow. But, uh, yeah, and he also has a little uh, little whistle here. I guess he kind of blows when the mail pulls up in front of your house. Right. But, uh, I don't know why. It's just my favorite piece, and he's just really it's cool. cool. It's, it's because it's head bobs. That's, I know it. that's it. That's it. And finally here, you have the original Quaker Oaks mug. Where did you get that? Great story. Um, my partner and I, Carmen Rodriguez, who was also the curator of the museum, and uh, my significant other as well, we're at uh, a friend's house for dinner. And uh, unbeknownst to Carmen, about a few months prior, I was trying to track down this piece and could not find it anywhere. So we're leaving our friend's house, uh, Randy Berman, and we're in the kitchen. We go to grab a pen to write a number down, and I'm frozen in my tracks. And Carmen <laughs> wonders what's going on. And the Quaker Oats man was used for a pencil cup holder. So I immediately told Randy that if he were to give us Quaker Oats man as a donation to the museum, we would give him a donor's plaque because what we're going to do in a few months, we're going to have a grand opening, if you will, of the museum. And anyone that donates any pieces to the mu museum gets an actual donor's plaque. Wonderful. So I was able to get 1952, impossible to find, and uh, here he is now. Oh, that shape. is awesome. A and, smile on his And face. I know that you have clients from all over the country, and it yeah. must be so, it's such a warm feeling when they come in and, yeah. and you guys get to create it's and see neat. so many toys. It's neat because uh, Creatability Toys very much is an extension of what creatability is about. Yeah. So when clients come to the museum and they hear all these real neat, irreverent things about us, when they walk here and they see the museum, they usually sign in to the guest book. Yeah. Uh, we have a leopard skin colored uh, uh, guest book along with an asparagus pen from the Jolly Green Giant. <laughs> they get their photo Photograph taken with a Polaroid, and uh, they just really love it. They have a real good time here. All right, well, great. It's been wonderful. And JB, Claire, I want to sign off to you. Remember this little guy? Yeah. Great! Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>